angels and it's been uh, running wild in the world ever since and we see what's happened we see people falling all not just christians and ministers but, but politicians and judges and lawyers and they they fall like dominoes because of pride and rebellion thinking they're a privileged character there are no privileged characters but we are supposed to obey the the rules over us whether it's spiritual leadership or even uh, the Bible talks about governments and stuff, whether they're good or bad. Because this was written back in the days of Rome. Amen. Amen. When they were crucifying all, 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 all the Christians and throwing them to the lions. And he says, obey the authority over you. Oh my God. I, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that's a whole other sermon. But we have to be careful. The uh, Bible says, don't speak evil of dignitaries. Mm -hmm. He said, and, and, and you need to fear him that bears the sword. Today it would be guns and everything, which is the law. And the only time we're allowed to rebel against the law of man is when it interferes with the laws of God. That's right. That's right. Now, so don't be confused about that. If they come into your house and start looking for your Bible, they ain't getting mine. Take me to jail. I ain't giving up my Bible. I'm not going to stop praying. That's what it's talking about. But when he talks about you got to pay your taxes no matter how high they get, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. got to pay your taxes. Mm -hmm. Rent down to Caesar, Caesar what is Caesar's? Mm -hmm. Our Uncle Sam in this case. Mm -hmm. Ain't no uncle of mine. But anyhow, <laughs> distant, distant uncle. Yeah, and under God, what is God's? See, the Lord wasn't in the politics. Although we have a right to voice our opinion in this country. But he wasn't into politics. He was about his father's business. Can I get a witness? Amen. Hallelujah. And most of all, we got to make sure that we don't have unconfessed sin. That can hinder your walk with God big time. We should always be walking in, a, in an attitude of repentance. Amen. And grieving over our mistakes and our faults, our weaknesses. Because we're all frail. We all fall short of the glory of God. Matter of fact, the last time I read it, it says that there's none righteous, no, not even one. Mm -hmm. Amen. Ain't that something that put us all on the same level? Mm -hmm. See, could you imagine if one person up says, everybody's a mess but me? <laughs> <laughs> How's that going to make you feel? You know what I'm saying? No, he said, you're all messed up. <laughs> you all deserve to go to hell. But my amazing grace. Oh, I feel like singing. I wish I could sing. I mean, <laughs> maybe later. All right. And of course, a lack of faith. A lack of faith will hinder your 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 uh, walk with God in a minute. Hinder your prayer because a lack of faith is not true prayer. Think about it. If you're praying, I hope, I guess, maybe, might, I don't know, maybe them, but not me. You know, that's all doubt. That's all. The Bible says you never receive anything good from the Lord. He said, then your faith is like the waves of the sea, tossed to and fro, up and down. I call it roller coaster Christians. You know what I mean? When they feel good, they, they, they got faith. When, they, when the bottom falls out, they fall out with it. That's how our faith should be stable. Even when we're being attacked. Even when the fiery darts are coming. That's why you need to learn how to pray. Amen? And if you're praying, pray more. Because in these last wicked days, we've got to all pick it up a notch. Because what we prayed last year, five years ago, ten years ago, ain't going to get it. Because the devil picked up the pace, and we got to pick up the pace. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. I see two of you nodding your head. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. Make no mistake about it. Prayer can change you. Prayer changes you. Because prayer is a two-way street. When you're praying and talking to God, then you have to listen and let God talk to you. He'll talk to your spirit, man by the Holy Spirit, and He talks to you from His Word. He may talk to you through a song. He may talk to you through a sermon. A lot of ways the Lord talks to you, you've just got to have ears to hear. That's why He said in the book of Revelations quite a few times, He that has ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit say it to the church. God expects us to listen, not just do all the talking. Mm, I'm tempted to say something, but I'm going to skip that part. <laughs> Amen? Yeah. Woo! You say, I, I, a lot of people don't want to change. And you can't make nobody change. you got to hope and pray that they change. Pray for them. Mm -hmm. Because it's in their best interest and everybody else's, but mostly their soul, that they change. Mm -hmm. And I've seen people go to their grave that didn't change. How sad. Mm -hmm. What do they got to say about it now? 
Are they in hell down there with the rich man and others? Say, I wish to God, I wish to God I had changed. I wish I would have listened. I wish I would have really been real. I wish I would have just caved in and given to Christ. Now look at me. I'm weeping and wailing and gnashing your teeth forever without end. Outer darkness and torment. It's not what God wants for us. What did he say about hell? He talked a lot about hell. They said, I don't want any to perish and go to hell, but all to come to repentance of sin. We've got to walk in repentance. Amen? Amen? And shun sin. Especially that one that so easily besets us, he said. There's that one that always seems to circle the wagons and back around us and come back at us. Whether it's you or someone else that the devil's using or something, there's a besetting sin that you just can't seem to think you got the victory over it, and here it comes again. You got that's why you got to be prayed up. So when you see it coming again, you got you fight it off. You got to fight it off, or you can't let it consume you, overpower you, overtake you. There, there has to be a change. And I notice when you change, other people change around you. Nothing changes until you change. That's when people got used to the same old, same old. People can are, are willing to live a little bit beneath instead of above. When God said, I want you to be above only and not beneath. But some people get comfortable in that realm. And guess what? Your flesh, hear me now, your flesh will be more than willing to allow you to stay in the flesh. Be more than willing, hear me? Be more than willing to let you have them appetites that you had when you were in the world. Be more, whether it's a temper, whether it's an attitude, whether, no matter what it is. A habit, whatever, it'll be more than glad to, because you know Why? Because the flesh will stay there because it's familiar with that surrounding, with that sin. It's called the familiar spirit. It's a spirit. Yes. And it comes, comes back around to see if anybody is willing to walk in the flesh instead of the spirit. It's like we read, God looking, he's seeking for them to worship him in spirit and in truth, not in flesh. Because there's no good thing, the Bible says, in the flesh. Paul tells us about the flesh that we need to crucify it or it's going to crucify us. Mm -hmm. And I've seen that happen. People that will refuse to change, people that refuse to walk in the Spirit and stay in the Spirit, amen, that what happens is they, they start to yield to their flesh and they, they, by and by, they are no more. They backslide because they live more in the flesh than they did in the Spirit. And you hear me say it from time to time, I'll say it again. We're going to, well, who's going to win the battle, Pastor? The flesh or the spirit? And I always say the one you feed the most. Mm -hmm. Because again, your flesh will be more than willing to feed you what it desires. Mm -hmm. What this flesh desires. Again, it's, it could be 101 things. You know what, 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 what attacks you. You know what tempts you that ain't pleasing to the Lord. Everybody has something that the enemy throws at you. And the flesh is more than willing to allow you to just give in to that familiar spirit. Because again, you, we call it a familiar spirit because you're familiar with that past. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's why you've got to have the armor on to guard yourself against that. Amen? You need to become a prayer warrior. Ain't nothing like walking into a room and catching someone on their knees praying or their hands raised and worshiping God. And, uh, you know, I don't want to uh, pat my wife on the back necessarily or, or, or blow her horn or blow her testimony. But uh, just to give you an example, I, I, I walk into the room and she's praising God, worshiping God, got worship music on, doing war warfare. Many, of, many times it's for you. Amen. Our family, our ministry, our finances. We're doing warfare, breaking the chains, breaking the bondages in people's lives. Do you have a prayer room? Mm. Or should I call it a war room? Mm. Do you have a place where you meet God before anything else that morning or throughout the day and start breaking chains for people that you love, people that you see that are in bondage, people that you see that their marriages are broken, mm -hmm. their hearts are broken, their relationships are broken, they're tormented, demons are attacking them, you breaking those chains on people's behalf or are you gossiping about them, talking about them and not even thinking about them? Big difference. Everybody can be a prayer warrior and everybody should be a prayer warrior. Praying for the sick. Praying for those that need deliverance. 
praying for people's finances, rebuking that devil of poverty on, in people's lives, praying for people to be blessed, to be healthy, to be well. You know why there's so little of that? Because it takes time. It takes energy. It takes desire. It takes a want to. And that's why so many people don't pray. Because it's, they're selfish. Like I said, it's a familiar spirit. They're familiar with getting up. Where's my coffee? Where's my coffee? I can't, don't even breathe in my face. Uh, people tell me this. I'm not, I'm not making this up. You know, get out of my face and I have my coffee, we'll talk. You're laughing. But that's not in here. I, I, I've read this thing quite a few times. I ain't never found that. I can't even find a cocoa bean in here. And it's just not there. You know what I'm saying? So you get, you're laughing, but you're just making a point. You're getting the idea. You see, then by the time we get our coffee, say, oh my God, I'm I gotta go to work. I gotta go to work. Oh no. What an attitude. So how are you gonna bless people at your job with that attitude? Oh, I hate being here. Don't what are you looking at? Come on, you ain't saying it, you're thinking it. Hello. Yeah. You see, it really does boil down to your attitude. So when you my point is this, when you start the day off right, it usually goes right. Because you know what? You had, you, had a, you had a little attitude adjustment before you left the house. Mm -hmm. Amen? Without the coffee, glory be to God. <laughs> Amen? You had an attitude adjustment. So now when you go to work, you're thanking God. Amen? Thanking God you got a job. Amen. Thanking God that that job helps put, put a roof over your head, groceries in the cupboard. Amen. Thank God you have a job. You have an income. Amen? And say, now, Lord, you know them rascals at work. You know they're trying to you know, torment me because I'm a Christian. First, Lord, I need patience. I need grace. I need your mercy. And I needed it yesterday. That's right. <laughs> I said you should have prayed the day before. <laughs> Amen. But ain't that the truth? That's the attitude you got to have. It doesn't come easy. This takes work. This takes discipline. And again, that's why there's so little of it. Uh, who was it that sang that song back in the 60s? What the world needs now is love, sweet love. But there's too little of it. Hey! Uh -oh. Now don't ask me to sing it to you. but I'll <laughs> oh, Too little of it. And again, there's just too little of prayer as well. Glory be to God. Acts chapter 11, verse 31. And when they prayed, and the, the place where they prayed, the place was shaken. And where they assembled together, the place was shaken. We, prayer, it says, when they prayed, not played, when they prayed, the place was shaken. Has anything ever been shaken for you for the glory of God? Hmm? Are you able to shake some things up through your prayer life? Hmm? You ought to be able to shake, rattle, and roll the gates of hell. Well, the devil ought to be more afraid of you than you are him. Mm, boy, he targets them prayer warriors. Trust me. Again, in Acts chapter 16, verse 25, and at midnight, now most people sleep at midnight. Mm, most Christians, unless they got insomnia, but they're sleeping at midnight. Okay? But here, Paul and Silas at midnight was praying. Come on. And they were singing praise unto God. And listen, the prisoners heard them. Ooh. 